Yo, how's it going everybody? You got Sketch here and welcome back to the channel. And on today's show we're taking a look at a lesser known but very awesome series from Konami called Thunder Cross. Developed and published by Konami, this horizontal shoot 'em up released two arcades in 1988, which a few years later would get a sequel that we'll talk about in a future video. For now, we'll focus on the first entry which was ported to the Nintendo Switch via the Arcade Archives collection last April. This is a shoot 'em up series I had never heard of until somewhat recently and is a solid first outing. But before getting too much further, let's check out the story real quick. The story here is pretty simple. During the undisclosed distant future when space colonization is more common, planet Hanayamu 4 has fallen under attack by a band of military ops only known as the Black Impulse. The only potential contenders are the Red M24 and Blue Thunder M45 spacecrafts, which launch into battle to crush these interstellar ruffians. The enemies will be numerous, and the mission will be an intense battle to save your planet. Gameplay-wise, we've got a 2D horizontal shoot 'em up that feels very familiar to Gradius and its sequels like Salamander and even Life Force to an extent. During the game's seven stages, you'll fly through several locales as you flatline the the Black Impulse, and here is where mechanically and thematically this feels like a faster Gradius entry, considering the power-up system. You can upgrade your weapons by shooting down rows of certain enemy types that will drop weapon upgrades which gives you options that multiply your firepower, along with several arms to choose from. Main difference here being you don't cycle through the upgrades like Gradius, but have several options as the icon cycles before picking them up. You get three possible main items being the Vulcan Shot, Laser, and the Boomerang which can bounce off objects. There's also speed upgrades along with three heavy weapons like the Flame Thrower, Napalm Strike, and the Quad Laser. In the North American release, you also come equipped with Little Babies, which are your screen clearing bombs which wipes most everything off screen and does heavy damage to larger enemies. However, in the original and new revised Japanese versions, weapon and option movement are in place instead of the Little Baby, which makes for a lot of gameplay differences as you go through the game. The Japanese control scheme is also much closer to that of Thunder Cross 2, which uses a lot of the same mechanics. Each stage also ends with a massive boss encounter as a power core flies into the frame and ignites your enemies which are all large flying bits of machinery, each getting progressively more difficult. Once you've made them space dust, it's back to the USS 4059 space carrier to refuel and repeat. Let's discuss those regional differences again for a moment since there are quite a few notable ones like the weapon variety for starters that I mentioned earlier. The original version allows weapon icons to cycle through three base weapons and three super weapons which are tied to the bomb button. Once you pick up your options, you can also expand and contract them by pressing and holding the bomb button to spread out or tighten your bullet patterns. The level layout is also changed slightly by swapping level 2 as a starting stage in the original version compared to the US version. The North American release changed a fair bit of what the original had laid down upon its release by not only switching the opening stage, but also completely removing the extra weapons aside from the Vulcan shot, and took away the speed upgrades and the option control mechanic. In turn, the North American release was made arguably harder than the original, with the exception of the last stage requiring a one-stop clear in the Japanese version, otherwise it's game over, whereas the North American release will allow unlimited continues on any stage. The North the American version also includes a unique enemy type that essentially is a floating mine that detonates in a popcorn pattern with a bullet that tracks you and often will connect. There's a lot of these in the North American version, so be prepared to get smoked by these jerks constantly unless you get lucky or have enough spare bombs to wipe them before the tracer bullet hits you. It's truly interesting to see how much got changed between the original versions, and luckily with the sequel, it stays more in line with the Japanese version. Graphics wise, this has a similar look to Gradius with its sprites, and the main ships you'll have do look similar to the Vic Viper, but does have some some alterations like the wings more boxy shape. Sprites are large and small and the bigger enemies have a fair amount of visual detail. You'll mainly encounter foes of the more mechanical variety here and they'll have some pretty gnarly attack patterns in a few spots too. Gunfire and explosions got some nice animations and the Japanese version can have a ludicrous amount of projectiles on screen at a time, especially with the various weapon types. The US version's little baby bombs flood the screen in a giant blue cluster of destruction and it also looks pretty dope when timed properly, wiping out everything in sight. The super weapons of the original version can lay down some serious damage too, so whichever version you run, the visuals are pretty tight. Environments use a layered scrolling background technique akin to parallax scrolling that was new for Konami titles of the time. Levels are all colorful and have a lot of foreground and background detail. Each stage is varied in locales and it's got some really cool designs with enemies and hazards. For the seven stages on offer, each one is pretty different and often has unique enemies per section as well. Once the flying robots start coming into the picture, enemies will throw some formidable force at you, so staying on the swivel will keep you moving. With those regional differences, too, comes more and less difficult means of maneuvering each stage, with the US version being a little more difficult in parts due to not having the weapon options or speed upgrades, a few of which make some boss encounters much easier in the Japanese versions. Upon clearing each run, the game will loop, making enemies move a little faster, and adding more enemies to certain areas per stage. Enemy gunfire is also intensified, as well as faster, so there's some decent replay value here, and the visuals as a whole are easy on the eyes. Sound-wise, Thundercross is pretty tight and has a decent soundtrack along with some killer sound design. I know 
I've mentioned Gradius a lot as a basis for comparison, but again, the tunes here have a very similar vibe. It's got the hype tracks you'd expect from this era of Konami titles, along with a couple more subdued tracks that have a more desolate feel to them. So for seven stages, there's some solid track variety. Sound design in general is again pretty good with several different gunfire sounds depending on weapons equipped and which regional version is being played. Explosions also got a good bit of weight to them, especially on the boss encounters. The sound engine here in general kind of cooks and it has some really nice bass effects, especially with the sound of the ships flying into battle during the opening cinematic. Neon PJ Kane and Prophet Fukav pull off some sick compositions here, and that ending tune during the credit crawl is also a certified belter. For the first outing of the series, it's an all around solid one, and the sequel, which released a few years later, only dials things up further across the board. For what's on offer here, it's a great shooter and it looks just as good as it sounds. Thundercross is a dope lesser known series from Konami and it would be cool to see more games like this from them in the modern day. If you're into the horizontal shooters in their catalog, this one is certainly worth checking out along with its sequel which we'll cover in the coming weeks. The regional differences will throw some curveballs at you and the Japanese version's final level will test your skills that you learned up to that point since you only get one chance. This would have been tight to see on home consoles back when it released considering the popularity of the Gradius series, but hey at least it's available now. Thundercross gets an 8 out of 10 and comes recommended to shoot em up fans and fans of Konami developed shooters since this one is no slouch in the category. It's got a solid challenge regardless of which regional version and it's a fun one to learn even with the difficulty spikes that are in there. This also lays the groundwork for the sequel which came out three years later which is also a banger, so you really can't go wrong with either of these. These are both available on the Arcade Archives collection on the Nintendo Switch and PS4 as well as Steam on the PC. Thank you again for checking out this video. If you find these videos helpful that's awesome, I'm glad to use as a resource. Check back often, we'll have more reviews and commentaries coming up in the near future, but until then, take Take it easy and stay safe out there. I'll see you on the next one.